So everyone welcome to our next video and today we are going to discuss about the formation of peptide bonds. Although it is not that difficult, it's quite easy but it's really interesting. So without wasting much time, let's get into it. understand what are peptide bonds we must first understand what are peptides and peptides are amino acids bonded together and the bond by which the amino acids are kept together is called the peptide bond now peptides can be of various types they can be monopeptides dipeptides tripeptides oligopeptides or polypeptides now what are peptides so peptides are actually combination of amino acids as i said so if we have one single amino acid one single amino acid then it will be called a monopeptide if we have another amino acid bonded to it, since we have two, so it is dipeptide. If we have another one, another amino acid bonded to this one, then since there are three, so it will be called tripeptide and so on. So up to 12, it is called an oligopeptide, oligopeptide. And if it is above 12, then it is called a polypeptide. So these names are given based on the number of amino acids that are bonded together. So that's how peptides naming or nomenclature is done. Now we will move on to see how the peptide bond is actually formed. So peptide bonds we must know that peptide bonds are formed between the amino group and the carboxyl group. The amino group of one amino acid and the carboxyl group of the other. So let's look into the rough diagram of how it looks like when peptide bonds are formed. So we have one, uh, let's do the first amino acid, one alpha carbon. C double O H, we have the R group, we have an H2 here and one H here. So now this carboxyl group of the first amino acid will bond with the next amino group. So this will be our formation of the peptide bond. So we will have C double O and H H again C double O H and R. So here we have two amino acids bonded. This is the first amino acid. So here is the bond. So this is the first amino acid. This is the second amino acid. Here the carboxyl group of one amino acid is bonding with the amino group of the second amino acid. So suppose this is R1, this is R2. So here we have two different amino acids bonded together. This bond, this bond that joins the two amino acids is called the peptide bond. I hope that's clear. So the first amino acid and second amino acid will be bonded between the carboxyl group and the amino group and the bond that connects the carboxyl and the amino group is called the peptide bond. Okay, so that is very simple. Now let us see how this is formed. That's the important part, how the peptide bond is formed. Okay, so again let us move into the structure of the amino acids. So let the first amino acid have a R group called R1, just like I drew earlier. Now we have one C double O H, we have hydrogen and one amino group. This will be bonded to another amino acid having the same side chain, uh, same groups attached except the R group is different. So we will have one C double O H and one hydrogen. So what happens here? Now before we get into the mechanism of how it is formed, we must know that this bond formation or this reaction is going to be a dehydration reaction. So we are going to remove a hydrogen and along with a hydroxide so that a complete water molecule is removed. So this is going to be a dehydration reaction. Plus this reaction is an endargonic reaction. Endargonic reactions and exergonic reactions, I hope you know, if you don't let me again clear it out. Endargonic reactions in those sort of reactions, we have to provide energy. And in exergonic energy is released. So whenever we have the endergonic reactions, the free energy, the del G will always be positive. If it is exergonic, it is negative. So since this reaction is going to be an endergonic reaction where we have to provide the energy, the free energy change or del G is going to be positive. And the value for the delta G in peptide bond formation is always plus 21 kilojoule per mole. 21 kilojoule per mole is the del G value of the peptide bond formation. Now let us see how it is formed. So if I write it clearly, I have this C double O H can be written as C double bond O and O H. And nitrogen has two hydrogens. So let us write it like this. 
okay so for ease of understanding we will see that this hydroxide and this hydrogen will be removed as a result what do we get we are removing this h2o h and oh will give us the h2o so we remove this water molecule and hence the name dehydration reaction hydration means water and d means we are removing it so dehydration reaction so we remove the water molecule from this so what are we left with we are left with this nh2 c h r1 c double bond o now this is going to be the bond between this carbon and this nitrogen so we have one c bonded to the n which has, has one hydrogen already attached to it and then the next part this c h we have r2 and we have c double o h this bond this bond here is called the peptide bond so i hope it is clear the water molecule will be removed and as a result this carbon will be bonded to this nitrogen to form the cn bond which is the peptide bond so peptide bond is always formed between the carboxyl group and the amino group okay so i hope that is clear it is never formed between the alpha carbon okay this is the alpha carbon this is our first carbon so carboxyl group with the amino group forms the peptide bond so peptide bonds have some specialities and we will study about those specialities in our next video where we discuss the ramachandran plot because that will be discussing about the angles the bond properties and everything else for this video it is it is a very short video and a very short explanation on a very interesting topic of how peptide bonds are formed this peptide bond you must remember is never formed between the alpha carbon it is always formed between the carboxyl carbon and the amino group i have repeated this line lot of times in this video because it is important we, you should not be confused about alpha carbon and the carboxyl group they are not the same okay so carboxyl carbon and the amino nitrogen they bond together to form the peptide bond now the, there are different types of peptides and peptides need to be functional in order to be present in any body if they are not functional then they will not act so in the description below i will be adding some names and some functions of those uh, functional peptides uh, so that you can have it uh, and use it if if and when necessary whenever you require it so as of now this is how a peptide bond is formed and if we want if multiple peptides are being joined then they will be added subsequently towards this side or towards this side okay now another imp some important terms in peptide bond formation are the first amino acid that we have or the second amino acid whatever the amino acids that join together to form the peptide bond are called amino acid residues so if you ever find the term amino acid residues don't be confused amino acid residues are the is the term used for the amino acids that get bonded together in a peptide bond so these amino acids will be called the amino acid residues also while counting the giving numbers to the amino acids like in this peptide we have two amino acids bonded so the amino acid having the n terminal open is called the first amino acid and having the carboxyl terminal is called the is given the second or third or fourth so we go from the n terminal towards the carboxyl terminal now we may ask what is n terminal and what is carboxyl terminal see when we draw a peptide we have two ends two open ends one end we will have one nitrogen compound there is the uh, amino group and at the other end the right hand side we are going to have one carboxyl compound so we always start counting from the nitrogen uh, end that is the n terminal n terminal means the side that contains the amino group free and the c terminal is called the is is given the name is given to the amino acid that is placed towards the right hand side that contains the c or the car, uh, carboxyl group as the free end okay so n terminal is the first amino acid that we count and from that we move on to the next 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 so here we have two amino acids this is going to be our first amino acid residue and this is going to be the second amino acid residue because we always start counting from the n terminal it is just like in case of dna we always count from 5 prime to 3 prime so the whatever nitrogenous base is present on the 5 prime that is the first one so we always the coding or if you know about nitrogenous bases the coding that we have are always done from the 5 prime to the 3 prime end in the similar manner in case of peptide bonds if we want to count the amino acids we will count from the n terminal to the c terminal okay so i hope n terminal c terminal and amino acids these are clear to you and how to numbering are also clear 
so that's all about today's video hope you enjoyed it and hope it was very helpful because it is a very simple process and remember one more thing this del g value it is used in some cases so it may be helpful for you the del g value is plus 21 kilojoule per mole as it is an endergonic process and as i mentioned i will be writing down in the description some of the peptides uh, active peptides that are present in human body and their functions so that's all for now thank you everyone and until next time cheers